The Living World, Evolution of Biodiversity. This unit describes biodiversity of Earth and how it came to be and how environmental factors can, um, can cause and influence its decline. So biodiversity can be described as um, at a genetic level, at a species level, and then at an ecosystem level. All right, the living world, biodiversity, how evolution creates biodiversity. How evolution creates biodiversity, part one. By the end of this video, um, you should be able to identify the process that creates genetic diversity, explain how evolution can occur through artificial selection, and explain how evolution can occur through natural selection. Um, also, how evolution can occur through a random process. So let's take um, Daphnia, for example. Um, this is an environmental effect on a phenotype. Water fleas that are raised um, in the absence of any predators, they produce these relatively small heads and short spines. That would be like this guy and that guy. And then, and in contrast to that, um, individuals where we, they were raised in the presence of a lot of predators produce these like really large heads and they have these long spiny tails. Um, and they formed these uh, multiple spine features on top of their heads. So genetic diversity is created through mutation and recombination of genes. Earth's biodiversity is a product of evolution and which can be defined as a change in the genetic composition of a population over time. Evolution can occur at many levels. Um, evolution below the species level, such as like the evolution of different varieties of apples and potatoes, we call that microevolution. Um, so in contrast, when genetic changes give rise to a whole new species, or like a new family or genera or class or phyla, um, this large category change of organisms into which species are organized, we call that macroevolution. Among these uh, many levels of macroevolution, the term speciation is restricted to just the evolution of a new species. So to understand how genetic diversity is created, you must first understand genes. Genes are um, physical locations actually on a chromosome within each cell of an organism. And the gene has DNA that codes for a particular trait like body size or blonde hair, um, but the DNA can take a different form known as an allele. If an organism's genes determine the range of possible traits like you know, blonde or red or brown hair, um, these can be passed down to offspring. All right, the complete set of genes in an individual is called its genotype. Genotypes help determine the traits of an individual and um, the two processes that can be that can create genetic diversity in a population, um, like we said before, mutation and recombination. An individual's genotype serves as like the almost like the blueprint that completes um, a set of traits that an organism may potentially possess. So an individual's phenotype, however, is the actual set of traits that are expressed in that individual. It's not just always the way that they look. Among these phenotype traits um, can be things like anatomy, um, like their, physio their physiology, and, and even behavior. So, you know, like the color of your eyes, for example, is a phenotype, whereas the genes that actually code for eye color are part of your genotype. <laughs> so changes in genotypes can produce important changes in phenotypes and even in some cases individuals phenotypes can determine um, are determined almost entirely by their genes. For instance um, in humans if a person inherits genes for brown eyes um, they will have brown eyes regardless of what where that person lives or anything like that. Most phenotypes, however, are the product of an individual's environment as well as their genotype. So for um, like many turtles and crocodile species, um, the temperature of their eggs like during an incubation period determines of whether or not the babies are going to hatch as a male or a female. 
And like in those water fleas that we saw earlier, um, depending upon what pond that they live in, uh, their body shape can completely change. DNA is copied millions of times during an organism's lifetime as the cells grow and divide. On occasion, mistakes of this copying process can happen, and this produces a random change in, in the genetic code. We also call that a mutation. Environmental factors like ultraviolet radiation from the sun and uh, certain chemical exposures can also cause these mutations. And when a mutation occurs in cells, um, specific cells that are responsible for reproduction, like egg and sperm cells, those mutations can be passed to the next generation. Most mutations aren't detrimental to an organism, and but sometimes that this mutation reflects on a phenotype that can cause a problem in the way the species lives, then yeah, this mutation can have a negative impact. So these dusky-headed conures, um, they have a mutation um, that normally makes this green feathered parrot produce feathers that appear to be this blue color. Now, if they were in the wild, these individuals with this mutation would have a poor chance of survival because blue feathers stand out against an entire forest of green vegetation. And that makes them, you know, really uh, bright lights to some predators. And sometimes a mutation improves an organism's survival for reproduction. And this mutation can be passed on to the next generation and it adds genetic diversity to populations. Like these, some mosquitoes, for example, um, they possess a mutation that makes them less vulnerable to insecticides. Isn't that just fantastic? So in areas where we um, spray this insecticide to kill mus mosquitoes, um, these, in these insects, they don't die. And so this mutation has improved in individuals chance of survival and surviving to reproduce more offspring. Um, some of them have no effect at all, like this uh, red hair. Well, it can have an effect. It can have a social effect, right? Um, but it didn't change our overall survival rate. Now, if you're like these guys right here, um, you don't see too many albino tigers <laughs> um, because their pattern allows them to be hidden in the jungle. And if this guy is hidden in the jungle, um, everyone will see him coming. So he won't be able to surprise his prey. Um, this guy right here, even though he's related to these guys right here, um, this is a chimera. This is an example of how a, um, a mutation has occurred, um, but on a separate set of, of cells, a whole separate chromosome has allowed this animal to display two phenotypes simultaneously. Uh, it's a real cool feature, and there's lots to talk about it, but um, it's just one of those things that you see as a mutation. And in addition to that, this guy's eye color, <laughs> you know, also is another mutation. Genetic diversity can also be created through recombination. In plants and animals, genetic recombination occurs as chromosomes are duplicated um, during the reproductive uh, cell division cycle and a piece of one chromosome breaks off and attaches to another chromosome. This happens. This process does not create new genes, but it does bring together new combinations of alleles um, on a particular chromosome, and therefore it can produce uh, new traits. Uh, for example, uh, the human immune system must battle a large amount of viruses and bacteria um, that just regularly invade the body uh, from surfaces we touch. So recombination alleles, um, when they come together, they can provide new immune system defenses that can improve our effectiveness against um, organisms that are trying to invade. Evolution can also occur through an artificial selection process. Um, an artificial selection and natural selection and a random process, remember, are the three primary ways that evolution occurs. Um, humans have long influenced evolution by breeding plants and animals for, for desirable traits that, that we desire um, and want or need to feed our families. Um, all breeds of domesticated dogs at one point belong to the same species of, of, a, gray, of a gray wolf, uh, Canis lupus. 
Um, yet dogs can exist in this huge variety of shapes and sizes that range from like, you know, tiny toy poodles to Siberian huskies. And um, the relationship amongst all these dogs was initially all the same from the wolf. Most modern agricultural crops are the result of many years of very, very careful breeding. Um, pretty much all the food that you eat has been artificially selected for. So here we have a phylogenetic tree of um, dogs. So the diversity of this domesticated dog breed is basically a result of artificial selection from wolves. And the wolf ancestor um, what was created this one, this one species created this variety of breeds of dogs. And so you can see it illustrated um, here because this species is still alive today and we know this and we can test their DNA. Plants can be far more complicated, um, but also very interesting. So um, in this example here, starting with a very uh, single species of what was a wild mustard, plant breeders <laughs> have produced a variety of food crops uh, like cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels, spr br Brussels sprouts, um, kale, and a variety of other things that are shown as root here. I don't know how to pronounce that, but um, anyway, you can see how from just one plant, we have this whole variety created. 